The Lord be with you. And also A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Sorry, reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After rising from the dead, Jesus appeared to the eleven and said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And the eleven went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is the Feast of St. Mark. And while we know that Mark was the writer of the first and earliest gospel, and we have sort of little references to him in Scripture, particularly this one from the letter of Peter, first letter of Peter, we really don't know a great deal about Mark. He's sort of in the background. And that's really as it should be. Because as followers of Jesus, Mark and the other evangelists, the disciples, and indeed ourselves, are supposed to put Jesus and his message first and foremost in our lives. It's interesting in this letter from Peter, or Peter, he says, Beloved, all of you must clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another. I heard it said one time that humility is the thing that if you think you got it, you don't. And I think that's probably true. It's probably one of the more difficult virtues for us to acquire. And, uh, you know, the, the, the old song goes, oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. But that reality of humility as Christians ought to come from our awareness of the fact that we are loved by a creator God and that we are, in fact, creatures and that we do not control every aspect of our destiny and that we do not control every aspect of our lives and being. So we listen to Peter when he says, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. But the other thing that Peter tells us is, cast all your anxiety on him. And that's sort of the benefit of real humility, of really seeing our place as God's children as God's creation we don't have to be anxious we don't have to feel that all the pressures of the world are on us or that we have to do all the performing or anything like that we can cast our anxiety on our God because we know that God loves us and will see us through anything that's the spirit that enabled the 11 disciples and the evangelists and others to go out and proclaim the news, the good news of Jesus when it was difficult and dangerous. That's what enables us to carry on with the challenges of our daily lives. Let us place our needs and our cares in the hands of our loving God. And let us pray first of all for all those who preach the gospel throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the Kralicks in Peterborough as they celebrate their 68th wedding anniversary.
for God's blessings on them and on all married couples, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those who are sick and suffering, that they may believe the promises of God's love for them, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our church, for our Holy Father, Pope Benedict, for our bishops, priests, and all those who minister in our church, we pray to the Lord. And for all the prayers that we hold in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. And loving God, we place these prayers before you because we know that you hear us and that we need not be anxious about anything in our lives, and we make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given in human hands and made. It will become for us the bread of life. Thank you, God. The mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. <laughs> Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Thank you. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our loving creator, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands, the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's church. And Lord, accept these gifts from your family. May we hold fast to the life you have given us and come to the eternal gifts you promise. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. You founded your church on the apostles to stand firm forever as the sign on earth of your infinite holiness and as the living gospel for all people to hear. With steadfast love, we sing your unending praise. We join with the hosts of heaven in their triumphant song. We come to you, Father, with praise and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, we ask you to accept and bless these gifts we offer you in sacrifice. We offer them for your holy Catholic Church. Watch over it, Lord, and guide it. Granted peace and unity throughout the world, we offer them for Benedict, our Pope, for Thomas, our Bishop, and for all who hold and teach the Catholic faith that comes to us from the apostles. Remember, Lord, your people, especially those for whom we now pray. 